day was the day, and I'm just, man, I'm so happy. This is better than Daytona. I don't care if it ain't Daytona. I love it. He's not happy at all. He's like, oh, look at this. There never was enough money for North Wilkesboro Speedway from the start. If there was, then the track probably would never have enjoyed one of its most unique characteristics. When Enix Staley and his partners decided to create a racetrack in 1947 from a bit of farmland about 80 miles north-northwest of Charlotte, they decided not to use grading equipment. Why go over budget? And it created one of the most unique racing facilities around, a racetrack that featured a downhill slope on the front stretch and an uphill backstretch. NASCAR makes its long-awaited return for, of all things, a million-dollar exhibition race May 21st. The NASCAR All-Star Race will mark the first NASCAR Cup event there since 1996. You'd probably have to be at least 30 years old to have much of a memory of seeing Cup cars at North Wilkesboro. So here's a little bit of a history lesson and likely some things you did not know about the track. A unique .625 mile oval that originally opened as a dirt track before being paved in 1957. North Wilkesboro was for many, many years a study in survival as it persisted on the NASCAR Cup schedule. The people who excelled at the track is a list of who's who in the sport. Richard Petty, 15 wins. Darrell Waltrip, 10 wins. Dale Earnhardt, five wins. The last driver to win a cup race there, Jeff Gordon. When they won races at the track, their cars would ride up a lift to Victory Lane, which was stationed above what served as a media center and care center. That lift is still in operation today. The winner of the All-Star Race, as well as the truck race the day before, will get to do just what Petty did, just what Earnhardt did decades ago. My dad actually won at North Wilkesboro, so he always you know, reminds me of that in the late model days. He took an elevator ride, so I think it'd be awesome to take an elevator ride this year. Richard Petty credits Crew Chief Dale Inman as a big part of his 15 wins because of the challenge to make the car fast both going downhill and uphill. As Petty put it, it was a strategy track. And it remained that way, a strategy track of drivers trying to find grip and crew chiefs trying to figure out when to pit. The last time I was there, you could literally spin your tires all the way down the straightaway if you weren't careful. And I kid people back then, I have really big feet and it's hard to get that gas just squeezed down. I, I like to mat it on the floorboard. That seems to work a little bit better for me. The track has more seats than its infrastructure will accommodate. It will seat just around 30,000 thanks to temporary seating brought in for the event this weekend. The track thrilled crowds for years as Staley tried to pack as many fans as he could, but he just didn't have the resources necessary to expand the facility and modernize it. Yes, it had some hospitality suites, but not many of them. The garage area was kind of primitive. So the fans could see Victory Lane. They had an elevator to lift the car up to the roof of the infield building. The track was kind of an anachronism, even in its final years, as they built more seats and suites around it. The infrastructure never caught up. Wilkesboro's biggest problem was that it sat right in the middle of quite a number of NASCAR tracks. So as NASCAR became more of a national and less of a southeastern sport, and once R.J. Reynolds exited the series as title sponsor, there just wasn't any room for a 5 8 mile short track in the middle of a whole bunch of other tracks on the schedule. Well, there would always be room on the cup schedule as long as the Staley's wanted it. Enix Staley was a close friend of NASCAR founder Bill France and was even invited to the Streamline Hotel for the meeting when NASCAR was founded, although he ended up not attending. France continued to be loyal to Staley, but after Enoch died, other track owners scrambled to buy the track's valuable cup race dates, but none really had use for the track itself. Bruton Smith, who owns several cup tracks, bought out Staley's partner, which made Mike Staley upset, so he sold his half to Bob Bear, who owned a track in New Hampshire. Smith opted to move one of the cup dates to an everything is bigger in Texas track that needed a cup race for its grand opening, and Bear used his half to move a day to his New Hampshire track. And what happened in North Wilkesboro? The owners had a deal to sell to Bruton Smith, and at the last minute, literally, Bob Bear shows up with wheelbarrows full of cash and buys half the track from one of its owners, 
Smith ending up with the other, and neither of them were very happy. But they each took one of the cup dates and brought it to their racetrack. And Bruton Smith said of Wilkesboro, just let it go to ground. Just let it wither and die. It withered and withered and withered, and most had left it for dead. There had been various efforts to revive the track, and none seemed to get off the ground. In 2010, there was even a Pro Cup Series late model race at the aged facility. Some of the current NASCAR stars competed. They didn't really do anything other than cut the grass off the track. <laughs> when we raced there back in 2010, and it was, it was fine. I mean, it was, you know, everything worked, and it was all good for what we needed at that point in time. That was my first ever race in a stock car, so I think it was like 250 laps around North Wilkesboro. I was 16, I think, maybe 17. I just remember my arms felt like they were gonna fall off by the end of the thing. We were pretty fast, but I was just not prepared to go 250 laps in a big stock car around that place, but so cool that it's got a cup race now. Also in 2010, it was the site of a Tim Duggar music video where Austin Dillon is driving a NASCAR truck around the track. I was able to actually do a country music video a long time ago, you'll probably be able to find it. It was pretty funny. We made some laps, there was still grass growing between the cracks on the track. It was more like a show truck, but I mean it probably make a good lap in qualifying. Grass in the cracks of the asphalt doesn't exactly breed confidence that NASCAR could return, and the track soon was dormant again. Just how bad had it gotten? Corey LaJoy opted to use it as the site of his engagement photos five years ago. I could talk the wife into a racetrack because it was rustic, uh, because it wasn't like a pristine, it wasn't like we are going to Charlotte with the glitz and the glamour. We were kind of going with the weeds and the, you know, the rustic look. So that's how I was able to sell it. Speedway Motorsports, the company the late Bruton Smith founded, ended up owning the entire track after it bought New Hampshire from Bayer in 2007. Smith's son Marcus agreed to let Dale Earnhardt Jr. and some of his friends cut all the grass growing up through the asphalt so it could be preserved in digital fashion. It needed that much work just to be scanned a few years ago, and the idea was because no one would ever race on it again, at least they could race on it virtually. Then last year, Marcus Smith allowed a short track promotion company to rent the facility and use it for some races. They filled and sealed the areas where grass had grown in the asphalt, and the idea was to tear up the track and repave it this year. Those who raced just loved the experience. Those drivers included Dale Earnhardt Jr., who talked with us in the media about it afterward. I still can't believe this happened, man. This place was forgotten about. Anyone on the planet was ready to argue with you. They ain't bringing that back. They ain't never coming back. But there's a lot of people that believed in it, but not enough. Enough switches got flipped, and, and enough fortunate things happened that, that here we are. The enthusiasm from that event spawned an idea. NASCAR, in its 75th year, would hold its NASCAR All-Star Race there. An $18 million grant from the state of North Carolina through the American Recovery Act was enough to get the facility in satisfactory shape, and officials have scrambled to get contracts approved and get the Left 4 Dead North Wilkesboro Speedway ready for prime time. It will be NASCAR's Field of Dreams moment. Drivers won't have much to go on as far as how to navigate the track. It's just a difficult racetrack. Your car uh, does not want to stick. It doesn't want to take all that horsepower to those back tires when you try to gun it up off those corners. That's what I'm going to be watching for when we get there. Who's able to just use that finesse to tickle that throttle and get where they're going. The track will keep as much of the old signage that they can. They're keeping the old asphalt racing service while they are repaving pit road. They are renovating a little wooden shack that sits in the infield just behind the front stretch. It could be considered an office where post-race payouts could occur, but most people know it as a place where a moonshine transaction or two or 20 would happen back in the day in a part of North Carolina fueled by a love of motorsports and a thirst for homegrown liquor. I'm looking forward to going back. I think it'll be a good show and just something different, you know, something exciting that ties a little bit of history of, of the sport with current time racing, and I think that's a good thing. It won't be just a good show. The hope is it will be a moment of NASCAR time a moment in NASCAR history that no amount of money can buy. It has been an uphill challenge for North Wilkesboro. As the cars speed downhill taking the green, the hope is that a connection to the roots of the sport picks up a little speed.
Hey, race fans, thanks for watching our video. For all NASCAR on Fox News content and the best clips from Fox Sports, be sure to follow and subscribe to our channel.